Hi, Todd Dunn here today on November 5, 2019. Today I'm uh, making the first in a series of videos about installing a battery backup power system with a solar array to charge the batteries. The reason I'm doing that is that uh, here on the coast of Maine, particularly in the winter, we have a lot of fairly significant windstorms and they are usually accompanied by a power outage that can vary anywhere from a few hours to several days. Now we do have a backup generator, but it's a portable generator and to use it I have to uh, wheel it outside and uh, use an extension cord to plug it in and uh, we can only run a few things off of it when it's the way it's hooked up because I have to be very careful not to back feed the power lines. Uh, another issue with a backup portable generator is that it has to be outside when I run it and I have to take it out there. And because of the fact that when we have power outages, it's because we're in the middle of a storm, which usually involves uh, wind and rain or snow. So basically I don't have a good, well-protected place to run the generator. I just set it on my patio under my deck and let it run there. It's protected from direct rainfall, but any wind-blown rain or snow will hit it. And uh, consequently that limits when I can run it. And usually if we have a power outage early on in the storm, uh, we have to wait until the storm uh, sort of dies down before I can hook the generator up. So we may be 12 or even 24 hours without power before I can get my generator out and run it. So the idea is to have a battery bank connected to an inverter which then goes through a transfer switch to power selected circuits in the house. And uh, in addition, the uh, batteries will be charged by a solar array. The solar array is there largely so that I qualify for the federal uh, solar power tax credit because if I just put a battery bank and a backup system and charged it when we had power I wouldn't get the tax credit but by installing a uh, set of solar panels on the roof I can uh, qualify the entire system for the federal tax credit. So it's definitely worth doing. So, what are these videos going to show? Well, the first video, this one, is showing the installation of the transfer switch. And I'll explain a little bit more about what that does uh, as we get into it. Then I will be doing uh, individual videos about uh, installing the solar panels on the roof, which I will be doing myself. And uh, do setting up the battery bank and the inverter and doing all the wiring associated with that. Now, before anybody says anything about uh, me doing electrical work on my panel right here and uh, running into potential code issues, I want to point out that this part of Maine has no codes. I can legally do anything I want. I know, that's pretty ridiculous, but that's the way it is here. And uh, consequently, I'm not violating any laws by doing this myself. However, I am uh, aware of what the National Electrical Codes are, and I'm doing everything I can to make all of my electrical installation here up to code. And I should say that uh, many years ago, I uh, did work as an electrician not for houses, for ships, but I did work as an electrician and was a member of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. So uh, I was a card-carrying union electrician. So I do have some background in this area and I do know what I'm doing. So today 
I want to talk about installing the transfer switch. What is a transfer switch and what does it do? Basically, it is a set of switches that you can feed with auxiliary power, like from a generator or from my proposed battery bank. And that power will go to selected circuits and will not backfeed the grid. So I'm getting ready to do the setup of my transfer switch. I bought a 10 circuit transfer switch so that I will be able to power 10 separate circuits uh, from my battery bank. And the particular circuits I'm going to power are my refrigerator, my freezer, my well, my furnace, and then some lighting circuits in the house. So anyway, that's where we are right now. And I guess what I'm going to do is show you where I am in installing this transfer switch. And I'll show you the switch and explain a little bit about exactly what it is and what it does. Okay, this is the transfer switch. You see, it's not just a single switch. It's actually 10 switches. And what we've got here is a set of circuit breakers and then a set of switches and wires come out of here that go into the panel and basically what you do is you disconnect a circuit from the circuit breaker in the panel. It's routed through the transfer switch and back to the circuit breaker. And depending on the position of these switches up here, you can either be getting power from your auxiliary power or getting power from the grid. And this way of doing it completely isolates the circuits that are connected to the transfer switch from the grid when you're using them. There are individual circuit breakers here for all of the uh, circuits that we'll be hooking up. So basically what we have to do is run these wires here into the electrical panel and those wires can then be hooked to individual circuits so that the transfer switch controls where that circuit gets power from, either from our backup power, which could be a generator, or could be, in my case, a battery bank going through an inverter. So what I've done so far is I've mounted the transfer switch on the wall. Now this little thing is fairly heavy. It weighs the better part of 20 pounds. So I didn't want to just screw it to drywall using drywall anchors. Um, so what I did was I put a couple strips of uh, uh, 1x4 up here and down below that I screwed into studs using 2.5 inch screws and then attached the transfer switch to the wood strip. So that is solid now. It's not going to come off there. The other thing I've done was got ready to connect these wires or feed these wires into the panel. Well, as you saw, the panel is on the other side of this wall. It's inset into the wall, so I couldn't easily access any of the knockouts in the panel on the sides or the bottom or top to bring uh, the wiring here into the panel. So what I did is I cut a hole in the wall here. The panels, as I said, is on the other side of this wall. And I made a knockout in the panel and put a fitting here. And I cut down this piece of conduit so it will fit there. Fed the wires to the conduit. And now what I'm going to do is feed these wires through the opening here. and into the panel. Now these wires aren't connected to anything, I just have to get them to go through the hole, which is a little tricky. There we go, getting them. Yeah, I just have to, there we go, there are a bunch of them and it's a little hard to get them all lined up properly. But now these are going into the panel. I'm gonna run 
over to the other side, make sure they're not hanging up on anything, and pull them the rest of the way through. Okay, they're nearly through. Just have to get the last little bit here. And feed them in here. Here we go. So all that remains now to finish this part of the wiring is to put the clamp on the uh, conduit fitting here. Which I have handy. And we'll put it there. I'm going to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing a little better. Okay, we'll put this clip on. It just snaps in there. Now we'll feed a couple screws through and get it into, lined up and get, them, get these screws started. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward, just a little time consuming because there are a lot of turns on these screws. And there's a little notch here that will lock that uh, conduit into the fitting. make a pretty good size cutout in the drywall to allow the conduit to bend out and clear that edge. So that's pretty much it there. That's snug. That's not going anywhere. So that's uh, fed through and until I get ready to attach the inverter feed to the transfer switch I'm finished in here. So now all I have left to do is connect these wires up to the circuit breakers so that instead of power going from a circuit breaker to a particular uh, system, the power will instead go through the transfer switch so I can switch its source and then back to the circuit breaker. And these wires are labeled a through J to correspond to the 10 circuit breakers on the transfer switch. What you do basically is you would, for example, this is my well pump up here. If I wanted to put the well pump onto the transfer switch, which I do, is I would undo the wires there, replace them with the wires labeled A and B here, which is the the particular switches I want to use to switch my 220 volt well pump and then find the A and B wires here and tie them in with wire ties to the wires that are currently going to the circuit breaker and the only other thing I have to do is connect the neutral wire and the ground wire to the neutral and ground points in the panel. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because in order to do that I'm going to have to uh, shut off power to the house. So if I flip the power off right now all the lights in the house are going to go out. 
It's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon here. Right now it's an overcast rainy day, so if I flip the that circuit breaker, it's going to get pretty dark in here, and I'm not going to be able to film very effectively. So what I'm going to do is wait until tomorrow, and when it's supposed to be sunny, and we'll get a lot more light, I'll come out here uh, when it's nice and bright, and we'll make all my transitions. I've got a total of 10 circuits that I'm going to switch. Two of them will go to my well. Uh, one will go to the refrigerator, one will go to the freezer, and I know which breakers correspond to the refrigerator and the freezer. And uh, then I'm going to do lighting circuits. And not all the lighting circuits I want to do are in this panel. This sub-panel over here also has some of the lighting circuits that I will be connecting. Now, they're listed up here. Unfortunately, when this house was built, it was wired by the guy who built it, who was not an electrician or a home builder for that matter, just an amateur, and uh, he didn't bother to label what the circuits were. So any labels you see here are from me turning things on and off, and there are a couple here that when I turned them on and off I couldn't find what they corresponded to. So I'm going to have to play with that a little bit more and uh, try to find out what's what. Although I won't be doing that today because my wife is home and she gets really upset if I start turning power off to things. So uh, I'll have to wait until she goes out tomorrow and I can then do this uh, at my leisure when she's not here to uh, complain about me shutting the power off to something she's trying to do. Anyway, that's what's going to happen tomorrow as I'll be connecting these wires up. It's pretty straightforward. It won't take very long and we'll get everything done and at that point we can come back and close the panel up and I'll be finished in here at least until I get ready to hook up my inverter. So see you tomorrow for the actual wiring of the transfer switch into the electrical panel so that everything works appropriately.